All right, well, Alex laying it on thick once again. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me on stage. And I think it's pretty obvious that the audio industry has been rapidly changing um, over the past few years. And I'm curious what Hyundai's, what your outlook is on this future of mobility change. I mean, how is Hyundai responding to this change? Yeah, before I go into this, I want to thank the office of the uh, Premier Minister to invite us here, to invite me to have the opportunity to talk a little bit about what is Hyundai doing uh, in yeah, smart mobility. Yeah, getting to your question, uh, Kirsten, I mean, there's a big challenge out for all OEMs in these days, as you all know, and just the manufacturing cars and selling them is not enough anymore. So there will be fierce and is already fierce competition coming from IT companies. Our typical value creating is highly at risk with the sharing economy, car sharing, car hailing and so on. So we heard a lot of discussions today. So we need to create uh, new kinds of value creation as OEM. And uh, this is the reason why last year we declared in Hyundai Motor Group that we will become a smart mobility solution provider. And for us, I mean, there's two aspects to it, like technology and service to make future mobility. And uh, autonomous driving, connectivity, and the electrification are the core three things for us on the technology part and that will create all kinds of different mobility. Uh, the one we talk and we hear about a lot here in Tel Aviv, I saw a lot of micro mobility, all the scooters driving around. And, uh, but recently we are expanding also into urban air mobility. Maybe some of you heard we uh, create a company in the US for urban air mobility. And yeah, of course, a whole range of uh, the other mobility services. And also we are aggressively moving forward with uh, robots, robotics, delivery robots. So and in the service area, the yeah, consumer-centric on-demand services this is where we will also expand into, so not only yeah, manufacturing vehicles, but also we will work on the service side and build service platforms and so on. And to get into this, I mean, to learn about this, we already teamed with some global partners like Ola or Grab and to get into this business. But also we did this uh, a little bit to secure our sales channels because sales, traditional sales channels are highly at risk nowadays. And this is why, yeah, we go into this area. And uh, the mass migration into the metropolitan in the mega cities, this is of course a big problem. We heard about this today a lot. There's another few pictures about traffic congestion. And uh, we take this seriously. And I mean, we haven't fixed this for Seoul, yeah? like uh, Tel Aviv couldn't fix it yet. But of course, we are thinking about it and we are making ideas how we can move on and find appropriate solutions. And one thing is clear, it can only work when we can collaborate with the authorities from city or countryside or governments. And this is what we need to get things going. And uh, yeah, we, we are now, we have started talking a lot and in Korea things are doing pretty well to move on. So yeah, we believe the main enabler for these new services will be the autonomous driving and the sustainable driving technology. And like Mobileye was, I think, one of the key enabler to get things going. And I see a lot of yeah, uh, new, new startups here uh, to keep pushing, to expand and uh, give a significant contribution to the progress in autonomous driving and future mobility technology. And um, you heard this this morning that, okay, now is the time to make it happen, to commercialize this. And this is where we have a strong focus. We are not talking about pilot projects anymore. Of course, we do pilots like in Irvine with Pony AI, but to go in big scale. And we have a clear idea how to do that. And uh, we are moving forward. And the uh, yeah, joint venture, what Alex just mentioned, is, was one key part of the puzzle to go there, of the puzzle, sorry, my German always comes through. Yeah. So yeah, besides our own research and development that we do for quite some time for ADAS and autonomous driving, uh, we, we partnered already with several companies, as you know, Aurora and so on. 
But this, of course, was a big step. The joint venture now uh, that we are going to establish together with Aptiv, and that will be the big breakthrough for us to make a good big step into autonomous driving. And uh, this is not easy, that's clear, to make the money and to find the solutions that is not only leading to even more congestion in the city that we can see a lot. And yeah, we need a lot of good support and smart brains, and I think there's many in Israel, to help us finding the right solutions. And now is the time to get things going. So really what you're here is to recruit as many people as you can to come to Hyundai, right? And find all those smart minds? <laughs> yeah, we are open. <laughs> um, well, Hyundai isn't just uh, going into autonomous vehicles and some of the service areas and you created this whole ecosystem. You've also been pretty active on the alternative energy side of things. And I'm wondering what Hyundai's outlook is specifically with alternative energy in the transportation sector as a mean or means or as a catalyst to overcoming environmental issues. Yeah, as a smart mobility solution provider, the sustainability is a key part of it. It doesn't help uh, if you find solutions that are not sustainable. So, and uh, from Kyoto Protocol from 97 going to Paris Agreement in 2015, I mean, the graph is showing uh, what's going on and the global warming is the core issue. And of course, in different areas of this planet, there's a different sense of urgency about this. But this is clearly something that drives us a lot to come up with solutions to help society to fix this issue of global warming. And uh, I mean, the, the voices are getting louder and stronger that the automotive industry should play a big role to find solutions and to fix this issue. And uh, so we are listening and of course we, we, we want to be a good player on this planet and so we take this as one of our responsibilities really to come up with solutions and not use finite energy sources any longer but come up with sustainable, sustainable solutions for future mobility. And now, of course, eco-friendliness has become a big area of competition. Yeah? All the OEMs go for battery electric cars, hybrid cars, and so on. And there's a fierce competition already out there. But in certain areas like Europe, with the CO2 regulations, this will be a very enjoyable fight for the customers who go for a battery electric car. And yeah, we are looking forward for this challenge. And uh, okay, many OEMs have been doing announcements for a lot of time. Yeah, in uh, Hyundai we haven't talked so much about, about the things we, we will do, we just do. And uh, we are the only company, OEM so far, that is offering the whole range of vehicles. Of course, we have ICEs, but we have mild hybrid, we have hybrid, we have plug-in hybrid, we have battery electric, and we are selling in a global way also fuel cell electric. So we are the only OEM who is offering that range of vehicles right now. And of course, these technologies will coexist for quite some time. It's hard to tell in which area, which technology uh, will have the best, uh, the most customers. And it's a lot managed by subsidies, by regulations, and yeah, like by the carrots we heard about before. But we are fully convinced that to meet 2015 targets of CO2 and global warming without hydrogen will not be possible to go there. And we have started hydrogen development already 20 years ago, and we never stopped doing it. So, and uh, that is what will lead us into a position where today we know that hydrogen solution can be very helpful to fix a lot of these issues that we are discussing here today. It's a natural, almost endless energy, and with the right energy source from sustainable uh, power, then we can have very clean and very green energy. And uh, our hydrogen fuel cell electric car, it does not ex emit any harmful pollutants. So it's just water coming out of there, and that's as clean as you can almost drink it. 
And when our Nexo fuel cell car is on the road, it's, it's almost like a running air purifier. So we prepared a little video clip that explains to you why our fuel cell EV is, is an air purifier. So in one of the balloons, there was the, the fine dust that one person would breathe in his lifetime on this planet on average. Yeah? And so the, the Nexo is sucking in this, this fine dust air. It goes through the fuel cell stack and through the exhaust system, we blow up the other balloon and it's just full of moist, clean air. And all the, the fine dust is in the filtering system. So it's a very effective filter. And uh, so with the Nexo on the road, with 15,000 kilometers uh, driving in a year, it's about the air that uh, Christine and me would breathe in one year. So it's, it's a good air cleaner. And uh, if we had one million Nexos on the road, that would clean a lot of air and reduce CO2, uh, 2.1 million tons and uh, also would save the money spending for about 1.25 million a billion dollars of crude oil so and we think that hydrogen is the right energy to overcome a lot of the environmental challenges. Well, it's interesting because there's so much attention on electric vehicles and you have some, you have the Kona, and uh, then of course, under also the motor group, you've got the Kia Nero. And, um, and I know that they've been proven to be pretty popular, especially in Europe. But the focus on hydrogen is interesting. Beyond the Nexo, I mean, what is the blueprint uh, what is Hyundai's blueprint for this hydrogen society? How do you get there? Yeah, so for quite some time we are expanding our partnerships on a global scale to find partners to go into the hydrogen-based society. And since 2017 we are a co-chair of the Hydrogen Council, which is working and to give direction and vision for the hydrogen society like a long-term vision, and we are playing a very active role there. And uh, we will continue to cooperate and find partners and to expand with our technology for efficient hydrogen vehicles into different markets and different areas. So, and as I said before, for the past 20 years, we, we have continued to research to, uh, to research to improve our fuel cell stack, and now we are in a situation uh, where we already have the second fuel cell vehicle on the road and we are in a mass production mode already, scaling up. And uh, every year now we are doubling basically the production. And our Nexo is, is a very capable fuel cell electric vehicle and uh, already sold out for this year. And next year we will double, more than double the amount of cars. Still it's not a lot, but uh, we are also expanding in other areas. So we are also expanding our fuel cell EV technology into commercial vehicles. So uh, last year in the Pyeongchang Winter Electrics, our fuel cell bus was the official shuttle bus of the Olympics. And we keep still testing those buses. And next year we will uh, sell 150 buses uh, into Korean market, fuel cell buses, uh, to run in public transportation. And uh, recently we announced our joint venture, Hyundai Hydrogen Mobility, together with H2 Energy from Switzerland. We make a company, it's already established. And we have a plan to sell 1,600 heavy-duty fuel cell trucks in Europe by 2025. Today we heard about something like 2050. Okay, maybe it's a different planet, but we have already the trucks running in Korea and we will bring our trucks to customers in Europe to fix that issue because there will be CO2 regulation also for heavy duty trucks and we are working on the solution and next year we bring the first trucks to Switzerland in a, for a short time of testing and then we go out there and selling them and also recently we announced we have an MOU with Cummins which is a global powertrain company and together with Cummins we will also yeah, distribute our fuel cell electronic 
technology into other commercial applications. And last year, Hyundai Motor Group, we announced our vision for FCEV for 2030. And it's an impressive roadmap with impressive numbers. So uh, we will invest $7 billion for R&D and facility and expansion uh, to grow our hydrogen-based economy. And we, in 2030, we want to have 700,000 yearly production of fuel cell stacks. We want to produce 500,000 fuel cell vehicles. And uh, that is already a good part then of our business in 2030. So, and the plan is almost going linear to that target. And we will push for global uh, diversification and distribution. Like I said before, we get already many inquiries for ships and boats and trains and uh, also for power generation. And we see also business opportunities even for hydrogen generation, but also for hydrogen distribution. So I want to just squeeze in one more question, and I, Alex won't pull me off the stage. Um, so it's interesting that you're taking this also this dual approach, commercial and also selling passenger vehicles, it, it sounds like, to build up that infrastructure. But what I do want to ask you is this $35 billion commitment towards autonomous vehicles and smart mobility. Why is Hyundai suddenly investing $35 billion into this area, which is pretty significant? Yeah, in South Korea, we have a very strong uh, initiative together also with the government. So the government, uh, President Moon Jae-in recently announced the future strategy for automotive industry in South Korea. And raising the number of eco-friendly cars is very important, but also become a test bed for autonomous driving and yeah, bring into place everything that's needed for autonomous driving in the bigger part and major roads of South Korea. That is number two, but build a whole ecosystem basically also for autonomous driving. And we heard this a lot today. Yeah, make it happen, go into commercialization, scale up. And you can expect this from South Korea to come. We, uh, Hyundai Motor Group, we have many affiliate companies and uh, they are already part of the game in autonomous driving, but also in hydrogen technology. So, and the South Korean government made strong commitments. So we will have 660 hydrogen fuel cell stations by 2030 in South Korea, 250 by 22, and we will have 15,000 battery charging stations by 2025, which is not that impressive. I think we are more aggressive on the hydrogen side. And so there's a lot going on on government side, but of course uh, also then from our side and other companies in uh, Korea. And this all together will lead up to an investment of $50 billion in the next decade to get the autonomous driving going uh, and establish uh, in Korea and of course also uh, in, in other areas. So five zero, so I think that maybe all the next great startups will mm -hmm. run over to South Korea because there appears to be some uh, opportunity yeah. there. So I just want to thank you so much for coming up. We're out of time and uh, thanks Mr. Biren. Yeah, thank you very much.